Hey, my name is Marcus. In this video, I'm going to go through a lot of the questions that we've been getting about building client-side web apps with Vaadin. Now, if you're a current Vaadin user, there's a good chance that you chose Vaadin specifically because it allowed you to build web apps purely in Java. So you might be looking at all of these TypeScript things with a little bit of suspicion, kind of wondering, what does it mean for my project and what does it mean for the Java API going forward? So in this video, I want to answer a lot of those questions and hopefully put your mind at ease about what it means and what it means for your project in particular. So let's jump right into the questions. First question, why did Vaadin add support for TypeScript client-side views? So to answer this question, we need to take a look at what web development used to look like 20 years ago when Vaadin got started. So back then, if you wanted to build a web app, it meant that you needed to support a whole variety of different browsers with kind of different <laughs> interpretations of what JavaScript even meant. So if you needed to build something that's supposed to work in a month from now or say three years from now, that's going to be pretty difficult because all the things were in flux at all times. So, so what we provided was this Java API that abstracted you and your application away from this low level web API. It allowed you to be more productive and it allowed you to more easily build apps that you could maintain for many years. But web development has changed quite a bit in the past 20 years, especially the past five or six years have been really transformative. The web platform itself has become this really capable app platform. And at the same time, we've seen a really vibrant ecosystem spring up that covers things like IDEs, tooling, languages like TypeScript that we're using, uh, all kinds of testing tools and kind of everything that you need to build kind of solid business applications. So the higher level of abstraction that our Java API provides is still a good choice for many projects, but we realize that there are a lot of developers who prefer to be closer to the metal and work more with the browser APIs. At the end of the day, we at Vaadin want to be the best framework for building web apps on the Java platform. So by adding support for client-side views, we're able to bring the benefits of using Vaadin to a much wider uh, audience of developers who are now able to take advantage of full end-to-end -end type safety and automatic communication and so on. All right, second question. What are the main differences between building Vaadin views in Java and TypeScript? So in most cases, you're able to build the exact same application regardless of the API that you choose. There are, of course, some differences like the language, the programming model, and the architecture of the resulting application. So let's take a look at those. Now, if you're using the server-side API in Java, your application code will run on the server and get rendered in the browser by Vaadin. Whereas if you're using the client-side API, as the name implies, that runs in the browser. Server-side views have an imperative programming model, meaning that if your application state or component state changes, you as a developer need to remember to update the parts of the UI that are affected. Whereas the client-side API has a reactive programming model, which means that you define your template as a function of your component or application state. So whenever your state changes, the template will automatically get updated with those uh, changes. With the server-side API, you construct layouts programmatically out of layouts like vertical layout and horizontal layout and by uh, nesting those to create any kind of complex layout for your application. In the client-side API, you use a declarative model that is HTML with some TypeScript mixed in for defining the templates. So it's a little bit of a difference there. The language that you use for building views is, of course, different. So server-side views you build in Java, whereas client-side views you build in TypeScript. Regardless of the model that you use, you use CSS for styling your application, and the backend always runs in Java. Regardless of how you decide to build your application, you'll have access to the same set of components and end-to-end -end type safety. Does the new client-side API mean I need to learn TypeScript to build Vaadin apps? No. So you can continue building your apps fully in Java if that's the way you want to do it. So the TypeScript API is completely optional. It's something you can choose to use if it kind of serves you or if it's something that you're interested in. If you're not, you can just not use it. 
And the same goes the other way around. So if you prefer using TypeScript and the client-side API, there's no need for you to build any views in Java either. So you can have a lot of flexibility in how you decide to build your application. Will the Java API continue to be supported? Yeah, so for Java users, things are basically business as usual. You can continue building your apps fully in Java. We are continuously adding new features and fixing bugs and uh, evolving the Java API further. When should you use the client-side API and when should you use the server-side API? So for most developers, this comes down to a matter of preference. So if you like to build UIs in Java, that's a good API for you. If you like to build UIs in TypeScript, that's a good uh, choice for you. But let's take a look at a more kind of detailed list on when you might want to choose one or the other. So the client-side API might be a really good choice for you. If you enjoy working closer to the browser, you like HTML and TypeScript and CSS, you enjoy working with those. It's also good if you prefer to have a reactive programming model. So if, if you like to be able to define your template as a function of your state and just having that state change update your UI. That's something that the client-side API does really well. The client-side API is also a good choice if you're in a situation where your organization or your team has separate front-end and back-end developers where you can more easily have back-end developers working on back-end things and front-end developers working on front-end things. The client-side API is a must-have if you're building anything that needs to work offline because that needs to run in the browser. Also, if you're building an app that really heavily integrates with browser or device APIs, it's probably easier to be on the browser where you can interact with those natively and not have to kind of go through the server. And finally, it might be a better option to use the client-side API if you're building an app that needs to scale to a really large number of users, say several tens of thousands of concurrent users because of the client-side nature of the application. Now, the server-side API, again, is a really good option if you prefer building your UIs in Java. It's also a really good option if you're building an app that's very backend heavy. You're constantly interacting with a lot of backend services Having your UI code close to those services makes things a lot easier and more efficient because you don't have to keep passing around big chunks of data. And finally, the Java API is exceptionally good at security. So if you're building an app where security is paramount, the server-side architecture's thin client model where your application code runs on the server offers really good security. Can I add client-side views to an existing Vaadin project? Yeah. So we've designed both APIs to work together. The only thing you need to do or make sure is that you're running at least on Vaadin version 17 and that you're using the client-side bootstrapping model. If you're in a project that has both client-side and server-side views, the router will initially look for client-side views and then fall back on looking for any routes that uh, match on the server. Why does Vaadin build on lit element and not React or Angular? So, We've based Vaadin on the web component standards because we believe that gives you the most kind of performant and stable platform for your application going forward. Lit element we're using as a kind of a convenience library to make it more convenient and productive to work with the web component standards. Lit element offers a really similar reactive programming model to React. So if you're coming from a React background, for instance, you'll find it very familiar uh, coming to this. The big difference is that instead of having a proprietary template syntax like JSX or Angular templates, you're using plain HTML with TypeScript. So there are very few library-specific concepts that you need to learn when you start working with Vaadin, and that makes it really quick to get started. So not only is lit element fast to learn, but it's also fast to render. In most cases, it's faster than React. So I think we've found a really good balance between easy to learn, standard, and really blazing fast. Okay, so is Vaadin 17 production ready? Yep, so Vaadin 17 is a stable release. It's perfectly fine to use in production. The only thing to kind of keep in mind with 17 is that it's not a long-term support release, meaning that it'll only be supported for a month after Vaadin 18 comes out. 
So if you start working on a project, be ready to upgrade it to VOD 18, 19, and so on until the next long-term support release comes out. These releases come out every three months and the upgrade process is typically really straightforward. So you update your version number in your palm file and that's it for most releases. Once you're on the next LTS release, when, whenever we release that, probably next year, uh, that release will be supported for five years or up to 15 years if you have an enterprise subscription. And once you're on that release, you can choose to stay on that long-term support release until the next LTS version comes out. So if you wanna jump on a slower moving train from there on, that's something that you can do. Typically we release LTS releases every one to two years. All right, and that's it. So I hope I was able to answer your questions. If not, be sure to ask your questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And if I get enough questions, maybe I'll record a follow-up video to this as well. So thanks for watching, thanks for all your questions, and I'll see you in the next video.